All right, anything new on uh, Zelina Vega? I mean, nothing new. The um, the situation. I mean, when you know, when you really look at it, it was kind of just the nature of what was going down and 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 how everything happened, and the economics of the situation is that ultimately this is what had to happen. There was no other way out because she was making more money on her stuff than she was on her WWF deal. So it would be foolish to give the stuff up and WWE would have to then fire her. And she knows that, you know, even though maybe she was disappointed about it, it was like they said, if you don't do it, you're fired. So she had to give it up. She didn't give it up. So she was fired. So that was the story. But there was like, from her standpoint, I mean, I know that there's some people who are kind of doing a thing of like, well, she chose twitch above wwe but it's like if you're making more money on twitch than wwe then why would you you know what i mean why would you make that decision when you can keep your twitch and she's going to get paid for 90 days and when that 90 days is up she's going to go somewhere and she'll probably get the same if not more money somewhere else just because obviously her wwe deal wasn't that high so i mean there was you know i think that that I, the gist that I could gather from her is that she was sad that it ended, but there was no way around it, um, you know. Um, so it's what happened. I mean, like what happens from it is is going to be very interesting because of, you know, Andrew Yang and Gabriel Gutierrez and, and you know, it, it opens up. That opens up a big, a big deal. And how that all plays out, you know, um, It'll be interesting to find out. I mean, the one thing is, is that, um, I mean, there's so there's so much to this because, you know, you, you know, if they were employees, then WWE would have a say so in telling them not to do this. But as independent contractors, trying to say that Twitch is a competitor to WWE, you know, what I mean, it's like saying, well, we, we you can't work for a direct competitor like AEW. Okay, that's. Yeah, and an independent contractor, you can do that. But Twitch is not a competitor to WWE. So saying that on your off time, when you're not on their clock and you're independent, you can't do a Twitch thing. Now, they could obviously say you cannot use the name Zelina Vega, but it's more than that. I mean, it's like it, this was not about her refusing to change her name from Zelina Vega to Thea Budgen or Thea Trinidad or whatever. You know, it wasn't that. Um, it was like you have to drop this and that becomes real tricky when you're supposed to be an independent contractor and people are looking at that and You know, I mean the one thing that everyone's talking, you know, been bring they've been bringing up a lot is Bruce Pritchard Does have an independent thing going and he's not even an independent contractor He's an employee and he's allowed to have his independent thing going but that's because when he when he signed his deal he said I've got to keep my thing and and then said, okay, as long as you don't talk about current WWE on the thing, you can you can do it. So that was the deal that they made. Uh, but if you're a talent and you're seeing this, you're seeing he's getting all the benefits of an employee, and he gets to keep his independent thing. We're independent contractors trying to make some money on the side because we're making. I mean, some of them, you know, again, like I explained on yesterday's show with with Mike Tanay, is that um, that. Uh, there's two types of people under contract right now, and she's category A. Category A is the pre, um, the pre whatever, you know, you know, not the giant money contract to keep you away from AEW deal. It's just the contract that you sign where you're expecting to make way more by doing house shows, and now there's no house shows, so you're not making that much money. Um, I mean, you're you know you're making a good living, but it's not like she's making a million dollars a year or anything like that. In which case, if she was, she probably should give up Twitch at that point. But you know, that's that's not the deal. So, you know, the as far as will she be able to maintain her numbers without the WWE exposure over the long haul? And I guess we'll find out. Or you know, in at and at some point, she's gonna get. You know, I mean, as soon as the 90 days are up, she's going somewhere. She'll get a good deal. She can talk. Um, so it's like it's not the end of the world for her. But the ramifications, especially right now for WWE making the move right now, it's a 
it's a tricky one because they have people who are looking at them and you know this is an issue that's been around for 40 years and how they you know they get away with it because they're a small company in 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 certain ways they don't employ a lot of people it's not like fedex you know and um you know fedex which which is a way bigger company than wwe got hammered on this very same issue but that's because they're a bigger stronger company and they're in the public eye wwe really isn't so but wwe is completely violating the standards of what the difference is i mean it's completely violating it's not even it's not even a debatable point i guess some people can debate it but I don't see how you debate it. And, you know, just by basis of what the law, it's like some people think, oh, they're not going to introduce a new law and have to go through two houses. And it's like, no, you just have to in enforce the code that's already there. And someone just go, look, what is this? You know, and it's like, you know, either you allow people, if you're an independent contractor, you got to allow people to work for other people in a different field on, a, on, on your days off. I mean, you know, how do you, there's no way you can, you can rationalize that one. I mean, I know why WWE did it, so they could, um, you know, I mean, they wanted a monopoly on that, and it's been, we've been through the whole discussion of it, but, um, you know, that's just the situation. It had to happen because, you know, it just had to, and that's the ramifications of, of you know, everything put into perspective. And she, there was nothing else that, I mean, she would have been, she couldn't really do anything else, um, really, and they had to do what they had to do because they had already made the threat. And if they didn't, then everybody else is going to go, well, what a, she's getting an exemption. Why aren't I getting an exemption? And then you're back to square one. So, you know, that's, that's the situation. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.